Heart of Ohio. Valley Sports Ohio. The heart of the fan. Karcher does it! It is Major League debut! He gets the final three outs, and the Reds get an extra inning win of Thriller 5 to 4. Oh, my goodness. Woo. Oh, man, I need a drink. <laughs> How's this feel right now? It's like a, it's like a movie, bro. Yeah. I feel like I, it doesn't even feel real, man. Kansas City and Kauffman Stadium. We raise a glass to the Ricky Karcher game. The Reds and Royals rematch game two of a three game set. A pleasant good evening. Welcome on back to Reds baseball. John Sadak and the Cowboy, our closer, Jeff Brantley. Did, did you get that drink? <laughs> yeah, I got it. <laughs> I mean, wow, what an emotional, fun game for the Red Legs. It really was. I mean, I, I don't know that there's anything else that you can say that we didn't say last night, but um, there, there were a lot of different parts of that ball game that, that were about pitching. Uh, but, it, but in my mind, there were a couple of guys in that ball game that played pivotal roles, not really from an offensive standpoint, but from behind the plate. And, and both of those catchers were, were amazing in just what they were able to do in the situations that were brought up. You get a rundown, you pick a guy off first, you thinking you got a dead out, and then you're the one that drops the ball and makes the error. Well, what Maley did is he came to the mound and he reminded Alex Young, look, we've already got two outs. It's a one ball, two strike count. Forget about dropping the ball. Forget about the guy at second base. Let's just concentrate on the next pitch and get the out. And that's exactly what happened. It's kind of like taking your hand of your kid and walking him through the dark. In the 10th inning, it was Kirk Casale playing NHL goalie. <laughs> yeah, I think the first thing was you'd see the big smile on the kid's face when he came into the ball game. And Ricky Karcher's his first major league appearance. Of course he's going to be smiling. But the game's on the line at that point. And I think that was the reminder that Casale gave him there and led him all the way through that inning. And then at the end of it, the big hug. And tell you what, that was some kind of inning. And congratulations to Ricky Karcher, who did have that slider working and got the save on the other side the outstanding catcher for these Royals Salvador Perez was black and blue at the start but did damage late yeah I think you get the question a lot especially in a red uniform why are you carrying three catchers well watch this this is all in the same game this is not in a week this is not in a couple of days this is all in the same game off the right leg off the face mask off the left knee and then again off the left knee and then somewhere else it, it doesn't it is so difficult being a catcher, even a big body guy. And you're relied on, and everybody talks about the big home runs that this guy hits, but the reliance is how do you handle the pitchers that are on the mound? And I think for the Reds, that's the reason you have three catchers. In terms of the pitchers on the mound tonight, Brandon Williamson gives a go for the Reds, matching up with Jordan Lyles. Yeah, and neither one of these guys have a win. And one of the guys in Jordan Lyles is 0-10. I think the big question tonight is, how are you going to call the game? How are you going to keep these guys in the game as long as you possibly can? Because both of these bullpens have been taxed. And we'll see what happens as the starters ascend the mound. Close calls have come often on the year. We'll go to break, but we're back. Jim Day on the way to take a look at the tightrope walk survived by Cincinnati.
one selling branded Cincinnati. And by Skyline Chili, feeling good. It's Skyline time. Rally Red still at it. 21 comeback victories this season, and many have been by one run, including last night. The Reds, as a team, have been in the Hyundai driver's seat. 13 wins by one run this season, including the last two games. Got one of the best closers in the game. Diaz strikes out to get a win. McLean, this infusion of young talent, young energy. Walk off Tuesday versus the Dodgers. I've even had to work on my agility. And T.J. Friedel last night. They don't get to Ricky Karcher unless this happens. Originally called out, very instinctual at the plate. Reds needed it. Here's Friedel to take us through the play. But kind of like, kind of like slowed down right in front of me. Like I was running the base path, and then uh, you know I was waiting for the ball to hit me, yeah. and then it didn't. And I saw it come right over my left shoulder, and then. I saw Salvi drop it for a second. And so that's when I kind of just like tiptoed my foot in and I like kind of stuck my foot in. And I watched my foot hit the very front of the plate and I knew he didn't have the ball. So, you know, that's why when CB, you know, when, when I saw him call me out, I looked right in the dugout, I told DB, I'm like challenge that, like I was in there. And so when they were showing the review, I, I kind of knew my, my toe got in there briefly. So yeah, I was pretty static. <laughs> All right, from the Show Me State, how about showing us another victory? It's the Reds and Royals game two of this three-game set from beautiful Kauffman Stadium. Lineups, first pitch, all the play-by-play -play action next. Kauffman Stadium, Red Legs seek a fourth consecutive win, three straight series successes. They won last night, the winning score on TJ Friedel with his artful dance around a would-be tag and a drop ball by Salvador Perez. He starts tonight taking ball one. Friedel doubled twice last night, drove in a run, scored twice, and he lashes this ball to right. He's on yet again. Full nine for David Bell's Red Legs, brought to you by Rally House. Matt McLean, seventh game hit streak. Jonathan India, Ellie De La Cruz off his first hitless game in the show. Spencer Steer, Tyler Stevenson, Will Benson, Kevin Newman, and Stuart Fairchild, who went deep and had a big bunt yesterday. McLean hunts the first pitch and pops it back. That's into the seats. Now the Reds are facing the winless Jordan Lyles, who has some dubious distinctions this year. Not only the, the ERA and the 0 and 10, 
The Royals haven't won a game that he started. They are 0 and 13 in his starts. McLean, the highest average among rookies. He has three triples in just his last 10 games. This is a triples haven. The last red to have that many triples in his first 24 big league games. Pete Rose. Pretty good company. This kid plays like him. High energy. Always prepared. Always looking to do something that surprises you. How many rookies do you get that come to the big leagues that give you the kind of at-bats that this kid's given you here over the last two and a half, three weeks? I mean, he, he looks like he's been here for years, not days. Friedel gets a glance from Lyles. Check swing. Appeal, no. At that level of discipline, Those cutters or sliders just off the plate away, the fastball up. How teams are trying to attack McLean. He's handling it. Check swing this time. He went, no appeal. Royals defense dead last in baseball. Defensive run saved, minus 26. Blanco waters Melendez, who's minus 11 defensive run saved, third worst in the majors. Infield of Garcia, Witt, he is excellent. Duffy, Prado, and Salvador Perez. Hard ground ball to third, handled by Garcia. Second one, relay in time, double play. Lost seven straight, their full nine from Rally House. Nick Prado, Salvador Perez, he had the late bomb, two outs in the ninth yesterday. Bobby Wood Jr., MJ Melendez, Michael Garcia, Edward Olivares, Matt Duffy, his first start in a week. He's hit 371 at home. Waters and Blanco. Reds look to the lefty, Brandon Williamson. Tough start his last time out. Of course, it did come against the Dodgers. But you give up three home runs at Great American Ballpark. You don't, I mean, that doesn't always kill you. Ripped to second, caught on the fly by India. You know, the, the one thing I think you have to look at, two of the first four batters that are in the Royals lineup, are left-handed batters. You don't normally see that 
with a left handed starter on the mound. Not in today's game. But yet the kid Prado just hit that right on the barrel. And now Kansas City's captain Perez a couple of hits last night that included his team leading 14 homer. He has the most homers among catchers and defined as men who have spent at least half of their games behind the plate on the year. I think you see that open stance from a pitcher's perspective and you think all right he's really going to close and dive to the outside corner. He doesn't do that. He closes but he stays on that ball that's in. That's the ball that he's going to try to hook out of the ballpark as he did last night. A miss up tonight's medical mutual five star report. Go ahead or game tying homers ninth inning or later Royals history. George Brett and that Salvador Perez tied with Alex Gordon. Breaks his bat little flare over the extended hop of De La Cruz. He almost caught that ball. And De La Cruz starting it short for the third time. Instinct, length, hops. Center field. Bobby Wood Jr. At Jim Day, Brandon Williamson has been in a spot very similar to this at another big step in his career. Yeah, it was the first time he faced the Royals organization. It was very his very first inning in double A. He had an immaculate inning. That is nine pitches, nine strikes, three strikeouts. It included Bobby Witt Jr. and Prado in that immaculate inning. He told me he remembers coming back to the dugout thinking, hey, I got this double A thing down. It's no big deal at all. Well, he proceeded to go back out there and got shelled the rest of the game. Did not have a good game. He said it was a big, big lesson learned early on in his pro career. He also saw several of these Royals bats at Triple A with Louisville against Omaha last year. And you know both pitcher and hitter remember every single one of those matchups. One two. And Witt chops it. Williamson spikes a throw to first kicks away from Steer. Perez breaks from second. Steer gathers men at the corners. Even with the speed of Bobby Witt Jr. It seemed like Williamson had a tad longer than what he thought he had when he turned blindly to fire the ball to first. I think he just rushed it a little bit and he buried it. Anytime that your weight is falling back towards the opposite base the chances of you putting the ball in the dirt are pretty good. Score at E1, loaded swing comes up empty for Melendez. Wouldn't you think you have to see Bobby Whip run here? He is a lefty on the mound, but yes, his speed is outstanding. He got his 21st steal of the year yesterday. Savant has him as the fastest man in baseball by average sprint speed. He is the base stealing threat on this Royals team. You've got protection from a sight line with a left handed batter at the plate. Smothered by Stevenson. Now some of the inherent risk you've got a high strikeout high effort hitter at the plate and your runner at third is one of the slower men in baseball. I'm, I'm thinking in this spot, if you're trying to stay out of the double play. You got a lefty on lefty matchup. Mm -hmm. You got a burner at third, first base. He's got 21 steals. And the last thing I want if I'm managing the Royals is to have a ground ball here and I don't get a run.
The Royals have endured their second seven-game slide of the year. Outscored 46 to 18 in this one. Runs are precious. Down to the wing. Melendez strikes out over 30% of the time. That's 10th worst in a Major League Baseball. Three, two. Sky deep right center. Benson back on the track. Makes the catch against the fence. Both runners tag. Throw towards second. Perez scores. Wit to second base. Reds down a run. That's about 10 rows up if we're at home. It looked like he got every bit of that ball. He just hit it straight up into the air and still almost got it out of here. And this is a big ballpark. Michael Garcia on base in eight of his last nine. Swing and miss. The secondary lead from Witt was significant as Williamson came home. Critical part of things last night, the Royals continued poor performance with men in scoring position. They left 10, they went 1 for 14. Strike. India covers pickoff. They got him. Fired a third. Tough tag. Got him on the chest. Pickoff caught stealing. One, four, five. Cowboy. Well, I think you, you saw an earlier step off and kind of move back in that direction. Obviously, Jonathan India knew something was going on as he was sitting right behind Bobby Witt Jr. But I, I think that's as much of a credit to to India as it is the pitcher turning and making the throw. Sometimes your middle infielders can see it, especially at second base. They can see it a whole lot better than you can. 
And a guy like India, he knows when somebody's itching to run. Two zero to De La Cruz. Misses away. Was 0 for 5 last night. Bounced into a double play. Did post a steal. Swinging 3-0. Fouls it away. Our Liberty Mutual Insurance field coverage. De La Cruz. A stat, cuss, a stat cast stud. Season highs for the Reds in just a week's time. Two hardest hit balls. Longest bomb. Ten fastest sprint speeds. And the fastest throw on the infield. Here he adds a walk. Now De La Cruz very much a base stealing threat as Spencer Steer stands in. Steer 0 for 3 walked one struck out twice last night. He hadn't struck out in 28 consecutive at bats over a week's time. Lyle's using that pitch clock to his advantage. He gets into that set and gets the hitter frozen at home plate. You can either call timeout, you can call it once, you don't get two. It's interesting watching De La Cruz when he dives back into the bag. He does not dive directly into the first base bag. He dives up the first base line towards right field and reaches back with his right hand. He goes. Good jump. Pitch up. Throw down from Perez. Lost off the glove. Helmet pops free. De La Cruz bursts for third. His speed impacts the game. A swipe of second. And then he forces the mistake. He's 90 feet away with nobody out. Yeah, it looked like Duffy was going to have a play. But as he went to catch the ball and slap the tag down, forgot to catch it. Infield gets drawn in. And De La Cruz even turned and thought about trying to score. Well, the error is going to go on the throw of Perez that hit his second baseman right on the glove. I bet that gets changed. I would think so. That was a, it's about as good a throw as you can have. Pretty much right on the money. Now, something we've seen from the Reds quite a bit, Cowboy, is that they employ the contact play. What is that? Well, they're going as, as soon as they read a downward angle on the ball off the bat from third base. Now here, nobody out. Yeah, I don't know that we'll see it here, but you never know with De La Cruz. And look at the patience of Steer, a fellow rookie. He has worked it full from down 0-2. Well, I, I think we've seen these kind of at bats from Spencer Steer going all the way back to spring training. I mean, he is a very patient hitter. Cracked over short base hit. De La Cruz jogs home. Spencer Steer ties the game. Well, the longer that you can be patient, you can get a pitch that's in the middle of the plate. He gets a breaking ball here, but that that's what Spencer Steer has done. Unlike any other red, he has been a premier breaking ball hitter. He is on time with the slider. Now, not everybody can be that way. You got to have somebody that hits fastball, but he can flat hit a breaking ball. Tyler Stevenson first pitch chopped toward third backhand go to second does get him relay. Not in time. Well, Stevenson reaches on the fielder's choice. Steer is pretty good quicks. I thought it was a bit of a gamble 
to try to get the lead man at first. It's a close play at second. You've got to be pretty sure of your hands and your ability to throw to make that play. Fastball up to Benson. I will say this for Garcia as he got to the direction of the ball instead of waiting on the ball to come to him he started moving back towards home plate to cut off that the bounding of the ball. Instead of taking a long hop he turned it into a short hop and that really gave him an extra split second at second base. And so the Reds trade and wind up with a slower runner. Three and zero, oh, and it feels like Lyles has sped up a little bit. Benson doubled, walked, bounced into a double play last night. Four pitch walk. Now this is what you're going to get from Jordan Lyles. As long as there's nobody on base, he seems to be pretty aggressive around the plate. As soon as he gets a base runner aboard, that's when he has the tendency to start to head to the outside and off the plate. Now you said exactly that when we sat here a few hours ago and I asked you for your thoughts on Lyles, who has endured a horrific year, and, and you're paying for him. I mean, these are pros, and they have pride in their game. He's got the worst ERA in baseball, the most homers allowed. First man to start 0 and 10 since 07. Well, the, the numbers that jump out at me is that hitters are hitting just over 200 with nobody on against him. That that's perfectly acceptable. But hitting 400 plus with runners on base, that's how you get killed. But you're pitching behind in the count. I mean, if every time the hitter comes to the plate with a runner in scoring position, you're 1 0 2 1 3 1, you're going to get hammered. Hard ground ball past the back end of Garcia. Base hit. Green light Stevenson. He chugs home. Helmet off Benson. Staggered stride. Slams on the brakes. And slides back into the bag. An RBI double for Kevin Newman. Reds claim the lead. But not the cleanest turn at third. I thought Benson could and would have scored there. I think Benson was thinking, I'm scoring here. And then when he gets held up, he had to go not only to the foot break, but the emergency break. You see that turn around third. He was getting it. Now Blanco played it well at left. Now the Royals bring the infield in. Newman has doubled in four straight games with an at bat. Stuart Fairchild. Hard ground ball through base hit. Benson scores. Stop sign at third. Again, Blanco aggressively charges, throw in, bounces off the glove of Garcia. Breaking ball right in the heart of the plate. You know, when you're when you're on somebody like the Reds are right now, you don't have to be so aggressive as the third base coach. And I think that's part of the reason that you're seeing J.R. House hold the runners there. He very well could have scored Newman on that. But when you're on a pitcher, that's your job as the third base coach to understand that. And you got the top of the order coming to the plate. You don't want to run into an out if you can help it. First pitch strike to Friedel, who singled to right to begin the day. And keep in mind, Lyles has already had a visit from pitching coach Brian Sweeney this inning. A one. Again in the air to right. Coming on hard. Melendez, he won't get there. Drops in, base hit. Later break from third. Newman scores. Fairchild up to second. The Reds are rolling. They have a 4-1 lead. And boos. Chorus down now here at Kauffman Stadium. Thank you. I mean, this is 
this is part of understanding your lineup. And as I was talking about the Reds third base coach, J.R. House, that's why you're, you, you have to decide, okay, am I going to, if that's Clayton Kershaw on the mound, you're trying to score new. Mm -hmm. If it's Jordan Lyles, you're playing for a monster inning. So you play it a little bit more patient because you trust your hitters at the top of the order. Breaking ball down to McLean, who struck out swinging his first time on the breaking ball. Fastball low. 439, the average against with men in scoring position this year, the highest by any man in his first 13 starts since 1998. And the Reds are four for four so far tonight. Runners go, double steal. Pitch missed down, throw to third, no. Fairchild swipes third. Friedel takes second. It's second and third, one out. The Reds are running rough shot of the Royals. Seems to me, John, that if this throw is on the bag, they get Fairchild. But the throw was high, and it was towards the third base dugout. So the third baseman, Garcia, had to reach a bit and then come back for the tag. And by that point in time, Fairchild got his foot in. And you can feel the burgeoning frustration for Lyles infield in. He had an eight-pitch first inning thanks to a double play. He's at 25 and counting this inning. Now McLean should have a great pitch to hit. Can he deliver a possible knockout punch? Low to load the bases. You know, my granddaddy used to say strike while the iron's hot. All well, right now it's smoking hot. The Reds trailed this game one nothing after one. It was a quiet first, thanks in part to a one-pitch at bat for India. Put the ball on the ground, wrapped into a 5-4-3 double play. Corners remain shallow some. Middle infield back, first pitch down. Melendez fairly shallow in opposite right. Perez blocks. Now this has been a conga line inning. Yeah, and it's it's tough for for a guy like Jordan Lyles, I think, mean, for any pitcher really to have this many pitches in one inning. You've had this kind of destruction that that's come from your opponent, and you're trying to reach back for something extra. The first two Reds reached. Stevenson then reached, but at the expense of a teammate, the fielder's choice. Five consecutive Reds on a base cleanly since. Breaking ball lifted. Shallow right center. Melendez coming on. Duffy out. Gives ground. Melendez makes the catch. Bluff at third. Strong throw in. Gets cut on the infield. And listen to that applause. Kind of a Bronx cheer, huh? This Kauffman Stadium crowd letting the sarcasm spill out. There's already a left-hander up in the Royals' bullpen with Lyles at 32 pitches on the inning. Ellie De La Cruz began the inning with a walk. Bounces away, runners break, everyone advances, 5-1 Reds. Fairchild scores, Friedel to third, McLean up to second, and the Boo Birds are back. Well, this is part of just trying to reach back and make the best pitch you can each time. When you've thrown 30-plus pitches in an inning, it's tough to get your arm to respond every single pitch. He just buried that slider. 2-0. Elevated. 
Austin Cox is the man getting loose in the bullpen. Lyles on the ropes. Broad swing at a sweeper. He's at 35 pitches on the inning. Well, after those two swings, I can't even fathom not seeing it for a third time. Two two. Throws the fastball lower third strike three. They struck me out too. The Reds score five. They hammer a four run edge. We are participating in the home run challenge. Every home run in this game raises money for prostate cancer research. So far, $477,000 have been raised. You can make a pledge. PCF.org forward slash home run challenge. Brandon Williamson saw a run cross in the opening inning, but Kevin Newman, part of a parade of Reds batters to reach, five came in. So he has been staked to a four-run advantage as he faces Michael Garcia. And Garcia was at the plate, was down 0-2 when the Reds ran a play and picked off Bobby Wood Jr. at second base. Well, if you're Brandon Williamson at this point, you're trying to fill up that strike zone at the bottom of the zone as much as you can, especially with nobody on base. One, two. Isn't it odd, Cowboy, how in certain years, certain guys either do or don't get run support? This is Brandon Williamson's sixth start of the year. The team is four and one. He's had some outings he's been very good. He's had some where he's been okay. The offense entered with 29 runs scored in his first five, averaging almost six per game. They put five up in the second inning for him tonight. I agree with you. It's, it's strange how that happens. Roll to short, De La Cruz. 
but I would I would go back to that's why you have your two best pitchers one and two in your rotation because they're facing the opponents mm -hmm. one and two so more than likely those scores are going to be a little closer mm -hmm. than when you have the number five or maybe you have a guy that you just called up from triple A. Edward Olivares. I think where things get askew is where your rotation gets a little wonky so you've got your number five facing the opponent's number one. That's when problems arise. Friedel just took about seven eight steps to his left shading opposite gap. And that's sent to left center Friedel sprinting after it. Scoop spin strong throw little offline. Olivares doubles. Well even without the eight steps there John that's probably still a double because the ball was hit so sharply. It just made a longer run for Friedel and a longer throw back towards second base. Now, this is a batter runner with a lot of speed that takes advantage of the expanse of this park. He has four triples on the year, tied for second most in baseball, including his teammate Bobby Witt Jr. I, I didn't think that was a bad pitch from Williamson. I just thought that was a great piece of hitting by Oliveras. A little more zip on the fastball tonight for Williamson. Well, I, I know that he's trying to, to stay taller and stay more over the top of his fastball to try to give it some ride. I think when we saw Williamson in spring training, it was a little bit lower arm angle. The the slider was a little more east to west rather than north and south. And I, and I think now that he's on top of the ball, he's higher with his elbow, so it allows him to get a better downward angle. Look, he's a big, tall fellow. You got to use every bit of your height you can. That is well struck to left center. Friedel sprinting back. Won't get there. That's off the wall. Wave is on at third. Olivares given the green light. De La Cruz cuts it. Olivares scores. Matt Duffy making his first start in a week. Smashes an RBI double. It's 5-2. I thought for a second there the Reds may have had a play at home plate. By the time De La Cruz got the ball, even his arm, not enough to cut that down. The other part of these types of games John is you get hitters once they're down five or six runs pressures off they just come up there they just see ball and they're hacking and you have to take that into consideration and you've got to control those at bats if you're on the mound. Breaking ball in chip shot to first cleanly read and handled by steer. Now the Royals have had such a hard time scoring runs. It's among the many warts on a team that is now challenging a rising Oakland club for the dubious distinction of worst record in baseball. Tyrone Blanco, who has great speed, Williamson steps off, no cover, no throw. Well, this is, this is a young Royals team, make no doubt about it. That's part of the oddity right so the Royals last year lost 97 games. The Reds are one of four teams that had a worse record than Kansas City last year. But the Reds youth movement has hit in so many spots so much earlier than I think anybody would have reasonably expected. But well, I, I think that when you when you trade guys like Luis Castillo and, and Sonny Gray and, and those types of, of talents Tyler Malley. I mean, that's three fifths of your rotation of a veteran rotation. Opposite way, hard break, and a clean glove by Benson. We'll finish that. Royals get a run back. Reds lead by three.
Reds lead by three. The Royals have dropped each of Lyle's 13 starts this year. Chasing Matt Beach. These are the only three men to see the team fall in 13 straight or more to begin a year. We were talking about trying to rebuild your club and how quickly you can rebuild your club into a what you would term a consistent winner. If you're building from within, it takes a long time because mm -hmm. you're you're talking about drafting players and developing them. You're going to miss on some. Well, where you can't miss is when you trade a guy like Castillo, Gray, or Malley, and the Reds didn't miss. Steer lips to left. Blanco, one away. And some of the other fruits of those trades have not yet Still come not to here this yet. level. But there are two of those guys that are doing awfully well in actually three with Noel V. Marte, mm -hmm. Christian Encarnacion Strand, Connor Phillips, and uh, I should say four because Edwin Arroyo has really started to heat up with the bat mm -hmm. in Dayton. Stevenson has reached on fielder's choice and scored. <laughs> Another two hits for Stevenson last night, who entered this game, Cowboy, with hits in seven of eight, hitting almost 370 in that time with power and nine ribbies. I just think he's seeing the ball better and once you start to to be able to make some connection and you find a rhythm then you can begin to be more aggressive and I think that's when the power numbers begin to come. Breaking ball sent to short win. Too bad. Walks were a part of the Reds patient approach in that assembly line of a second that included a four pitch walk drawn by Benson. In the air to center, water started sprinting back, but Reverses course. Reds go in order.
Storylines presented by Elk and Elk. Best records on the road since April 28th. Look at the Cincinnati Reds after starting the season one and nine on the road. 14 and eight since April 28th. They won their last three series on the road. And if you want to get to where you want to go, well, you had better be good on the road. Well, thank you, Jim. What a turnaround it's been for these Reds away from GABP. Second time through the order for Williamson. Appeal. Yes. Prado lined to second his first time. In the air to left. Hard break in for Fairchild. It falls in between him and De La Cruz. A blue pit for Prado. Like Prada hit that ball right off the end of the bat. Salvador Perez cranks a breaking ball foul. He singled his first time just beyond the hopping, extended long reach of Ellie De La Cruz. Bouncing ball, nice block by Stevenson, who has shown improvement during the course of the year behind the plate. Even on days he's not catching, he's doing drills with J.R. House constantly. Well, I think when you're when you're not catching every day, those drills are your way of kind of keeping basically your skills of catching sharp and blocking the ball and torquing your body in such a way that you keep the ball in front. That's just not something that is reactionary. Pumped him up. Friedel weaves underneath. Secures the out. Now, there is a consistent positivity about J.R. House. He is really well liked by this Reds team, by us as well. He's a good coach. Finds creative ways to engage these players mentally and physically. Bobby Wood Jr. reached on error, throwing error by Williamson his first time. It's not just engaging the players, it's working on things that you know are going to make a difference in the ball game. And you you saw Ron Washington years ago. He would sit out hitting those little short hop balls to his to his ground ball to his infielders. Well, all of a sudden those same infielders are picking up gold gloves. Now everybody's doing it. Well, are you doing it just because it's the right thing to do? Or are you doing it to teach the player how to catch the ball the proper way. There's a difference between those two statements. Because if you're doing it just because everybody else is doing it, you're wasting my time. Mm -hmm. left center that's gone his 11th home run two run shot it's a one run game A slider that was just spinning there. A 
That's his first homer of the month. He last went deep 29th of May in St. Louis. Well, that, that one swing of the bat by Bobby Witt Jr. has put the Royals not back in the game just from a number standpoint. It's a 5-4 ball game, but they're back in the game mentally. And Melendez hit the ball hard and deep in the first. Sack fly at the wall at right center. Mighty swing catches air. To Williamson's credit, Cowboy, even in outings where he's been more prone and was most prone against the Dodgers, you mentioned the six runs, three bombs, he found a way to pitch nearly six innings. He fell one out short. Now, the Reds don't get great length out of their starters on the year. The Royals are worse. In fact, they're the worst. They have the fewest innings from their starting staff in all of Major League Baseball. And the Reds should have a replenished bullpen. That is smashed to right center. Melendez turns. Benson strong throw. It is tea time for the Royals here in the third. Well, it's it's one thing if you see some balls that are hit off the end of the bat, some flares in certain spots. It's another thing when you see balls hit like this and like the ball that Bobby Witt Jr. hit. That tells me either you're making the wrong pitches at the wrong time or the pitches that you're making, you're leaving in the heart of the plate. And you got to figure out a way to change that and change it quickly. That single was almost 107 off the bat. He smashed it. So a wise move for Derek Johnson to go out, chat with Williamson. And Williamson made his debut and had that long stretch of retiring Rockies. He leaned on that cutter quite a bit. And it seems like the cutter here today is not doing what he wants it to do. It looks like, at least here in this inning, that it's just spinning. Garcia. A cutter that doesn't cut is just a mediocre fastball that's highly hittable. If it cuts, then you get it off the barrel. If it stays where it started, trouble. Now, Williamson is noticeably throwing harder tonight. Every pitch but his curveball is up at least a mile an hour. The biggest spike is oddly in the cutter, which is up almost three miles an hour, but perhaps that, that's... That means he's missing it. Yeah. There's the cutter. That was a good one there. That, that ball had some depth to it. That was what, 89 miles an hour? Mm -hmm. Roll to short. De La Cruz flipped to India. Double play. Two run shot by Witt. One run game.
Presented by Klosterman Bakery. Reds host the Braves, kids 14 and younger. Take home a red sticker sheet from Graders while supplies last. Graders. Kevin Newman, a two run double. He has scored. Raspberry chocolate chip. Mm. We were talking about it earlier tonight. I can see it, I can taste it. Hang in there, Mason. I know you love it. It's my boy's favorite. Not a big raspberry fan myself. Crack to center. Waters handles. Well, that was an interesting route by Drew Waters. It just tells you how the ball came off the bat. He started in and towards left center and had to pivot quickly and go back towards right center. That's the ball. That's when you're inside out the ball. You can see him move to his right real quickly and then back to his left as that ball began to slice back towards right center field. Slice, we're not going cake now too, are we? Not real big on cake. Pie guy? I'd rather have some fried chicken. If, if I'm gonna eat dessert, why not have the last piece of fried chicken? That's how I look at it. Houston does beckon soon. Fairchild at RBI single, he is scored. It's gonna be my first trip to uh, to Minute Maid, and you and the, the rest of the kind veterans have told me tale of what the dining had been like there in previous trips. Yeah, well, I, I took Ashley there for her first Major League Baseball game. Ooh. She didn't know it at the time, but the Astros were in the playoffs, and we were covering that ball game. Well, after the game was over. Waters in center. Two. She says, wow. This baseball stuff is phenomenal. <laughs> the crowd was electric. <laughs> and I didn't have the heart to tell her. It's not like that every game now. <laughs> she had no idea it was a playoff. She was just like, this baseball's kind of fun. Now this Reds team has been fun. Friedel, a couple of hits tonight. Only took him a couple of games, Cowboy, and it seems like yet again back on it. He's locked in. Yeah, I, I think it, it takes a little while to get that rhythm back, but his swing at times is so flat, it makes it really hard for a pitcher to read what Friedel can do because Friedel can take the ball and slice it down the left field line, and then you try to crowd him a little bit, and he'll hook you down the right field line. He showed exactly that yesterday. Yes. The just fair doubled inside of first and the opposite way shot that hit the chalk when the Royals were trying to avoid the double. And I think the 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 rhythm part of it is just for him to be able to get back into his aggressive form. And you made you were talking about this earlier today. He sees his job as just creating havoc. And I mean that's your that's what you want out of your leadoff hitter because not only can he do those things that we were just talking about left field right field. But have you seen him lay down a bun? That is smoked to second and caught by Duffy.
Reds for Cincinnati Zoo night one week from tonight get an exclusive Fritz the Hippo Bobble presented by Skyline. It's only available through the purchase of a theme ticket package while supplies last Reds.com slash zoo. Reds up a run. Miss wide from Williamson to Olivares took a two strike pitch for a double later scored in the second. Now the Reds had a roster move. Ricky Karcher was sent down. Daniel Duarte is back. He had just started to throw when the double play occurred to close the third. Opposite way, Benson breaks, and he's got it. Oh, wow. That was scary. It's almost as though he lost it in the lights right at the last second. You know the ball's right, hit by right hand. It's going to slice back to you. Almost took his head off. Thank goodness he's okay and in the process he's able to get that out. Duffy at RBI double first time. Swing it, miss. Nice changeup. Timeout for Duffy. Appeal. They will not grant it. It's Ben May on the plate. Crew Chief Jeff Nelson at first. C.B. Buckner at third. Tom Hanahan at second. Runs in, full count. By the way, at double A, Connor Phillips continues his role. He's been dealing. He struck out 12 tonight, six innings. He now has the minor league lead in strikeouts that Andrew Abbott held when he was promoted to the big leagues. And Phillips now at 100 strikeouts on the year. Got to think Triple A is likely calling soon. Bounce to De La Cruz, backhand. Two down. Brief message now from the good folks at Kia. The Kia Sportage X Pro. throw from De La Cruz was at 88 miles an hour. You know, we were we were talking earlier about Brandon Williamson and the two breaking balls, two cutters that he threw that got hit rather hard. The one by Witt and the ball that was hit into the right center field gap. If you're throwing four seam fastball cutter, sometimes that cutter turns into a slider. Then you're throwing a curveball and a changeup. Can you really keep those all that sharp when you have no experience at the big league level? That answer is no. So when you come out, give me two of your pitches that are excellent that I know you can command on both sides of the plate. Then you can mix in that other stuff as you go along. But if 
if all four pitches are just rather mediocre, this is what you can get hit. Because where he where he has the issue is his fastball command is not there. So guys, if you're not respecting my fastball, then I can never speed you up. And is that something start to start based on your your bullpen when you're warming up that you get that feel to know what pitch you have that night? Yeah, and I, and I think it's also what you're working on in between starts. Mm -hmm. Struck him out. Got him looking at a fastball. His first one, two, three inning. Cincinnati and Northern Kentucky Toyota dealers proudly sponsor the Tundra Homer Challenge at every Reds home game. If a Red hits the Toyota hit and win side, one lucky fan wins a new built in the USA Toyota Tundra. Register for your chance to win at your Cincinnati Northern Kentucky Toyota dealers. A strike one on Matt McLean, who's the last Red to reach. That was a walk in the second. He's also struck out. I've got white out all over me. Oh, no. We're off camera the rest of the way, so that's a good world will know. Jordan Lyles has retired eight in a row. Our outstanding stage manager, Lori, with wet wipe for you. <laughs> right on it. I need to live in wet wipe. <laughs> Jeez. It's terrible. Hard ground ball behind second Duffy. Nine in a row retired. Well, you get the eating shirt to shield yourself, which I've adopted as well many times. And now maybe the uh, game scoring gloves. <laughs> Might help if I write this in on the correct side of my scorebook. I'm invested in the game. I can't help it. You very much are. You are locked in pitch to pitch, moment to moment. I love that about you. One of the many things I love about you. India has bounced into a double play. He has flied to right. Melendez again cheats him a touch shallow opposite way. 0 oh, and 2, and India needs a moment. Perez knows that pain himself. Ooh. It was a great job by our truck and by you noticing. All the foul balls for Perez yesterday and Indy is a guy who plays through significant amount of pain at times. He's a tough man. Had that awful injury 
last year on the foul ball. I think when you're a, a leader on the club, that, that's a lead by example thing. And make no mistake about it, Jonathan India is a leader on this ball club. Two two. But I mean, if you're if you're a guy like Jonathan India, a rookie of the year already in your in your possession, how can any of these other kids say, well, you know, my my hammy's a little hurt. I, I fouled that ball off my knee. No, go play. And India, who is at times very aggressive first pitch, we saw that his first at bat today. If he sees something he likes, he'll swing away, but he's also quite often keen to work a full count. Here, bounce to Wint. Two down. Yeah, Lyles threw 36 pitches in a five run second. He was at 44 total after that inning. He has been cruising since despite some hard hit balls. Edley De La Cruz has walked stole to bag scored. He struck out looking his last time. As last time he saw a lot of that soft down swung over top and then he got him looking on a fastball. Oh two bounces home. Breaking ball cutter breaking ball to begin this at bat. Lays off appeal confirmed. So oh, when you when you've got a kid at the plate that can hit the ball 118 miles an hour. I don't care who the pitcher is. If you are throwing a fastball it's only because you set it up by making him see several breaking balls as. Lyles did his last time up. Because if you're thinking, all right, I'm just going to overpower this guy with a fastball, he's going to hit that ball like he did at Great American Ballpark. He almost hit it in the river. Lots of breaking balls here. 3 2. Got him again. Fastball lower third. He set that one up.
Same game parlay talked about at Reds Live. No ribby yet for Matt McLean, nor for Ellie De La Cruz. There is one for Kevin Newman. And there is still plenty of time. Reds lead 5 4. Duarte is once again up in the Reds' bullpen. Brandon Williamson, nice curveball for a strike to Blanco. Drop that arm angle some on the change. And that's the part as you move along at this level. The first time that you drop that elbow, they smash it. Because there, there's so much information out there now, not only statistically, but in video. And you see a pitcher that maybe drops the elbow on a change or a split. Little flare, tough play. Plops in. A blue pit for Blanco. So David Bell has rarely had Williamson go third time through. In the limited times he has, his third time through numbers are pretty good. But you could argue that's because of the selectivity of matchup when he's been given that window. First pitch, bounce to India. De La Cruz won. Got him, double play. That helps things. Well, it helps to be able to throw the ball 99 miles an hour from shortstop. Yes. <laughs> I mean, that ball got over there like right now. Ball was hit hard. That helps the red situation. India got it. Perfect strike to De La Cruz as he comes across the bag. But watch this throw. I mean, see you later. Salvador Perez has singled scored. He's one for two. Chop left side in between backhand longer throw up the line steer tag got him nice job by both De La Cruz and steer as they conspire to cut down the catcher. Reds baseball on Valley Sports Ohio is brought to you by your local Toyota dealer. Visit buyatoyota.com. Toyota, let's go places. And by DHL Supply Chain. 
Now hiring a wide range of salaried managerial and operational roles. Apply today. Join DHL.com. A five-run fury in the second aided Williamson. Reds cling to a 5-4 lead. He tossed a seven-pitch inning. And Jordan Lyles has retired 11 in a row. Steer an RBI single. He is one for two. And the Reds have some help in the building tonight. This was acutely and smartly pointed out by many of our viewers. Look behind home plate. Just above the T-Mobile to the left. Taking a sip of water. A Bengals Sam Hubbard jersey. Jim Day. Who day? It's Ryan Gallenstein. He went to high school with Sam Hubbard at Moeller. He moved to Kansas City with his wife last year. I talked to him actually last night before the game. Talked to him again tonight, and he's got the same seat, same jersey. He didn't wash it. He says it's his good luck charm. <laughs> Said he got booed on the way into the stadium last night. He got booed during the game. It was Kansas City Chiefs night last night. But he's back here. Rooting on his red legs, and boy, was he giving C.B. Buckner the business last night. But he is a terrific young man. It was great to meet him. He is all Cincinnati right now. Uh, even David Bell mentioned in exchange with him. Apparently, they share mutual friends. Yeah, Cincinnati, everybody knows everybody. Men of Moeller stick together. He also has a relative. He's not directly related to Dave Miley but has a family member that's related sort of to Dave Miley the former Red Skipper Duffy makes the catch Stevenson pops out my first triple a manager Dave Miley with the Yankees and Scranton he calls him Uncle Dave shout out to Dave Miley if you're watching out there one of my all time favorite guys he does a mean Johnny Cash. Will Benson has walked and scored. He's also flied to center. Ball one. What has allowed Lyles to snap into form like this? I think part of it is the Reds retired from everybody running the bases in the second inning. <laughs> but more realistically, he's just been better location. But I, I go back to my comment in the second inning. He gets guys on base. He gets ripped. The rest don't have anybody on base. Mm -hmm. And this is when he's at his best. A tsunami of reds reached. Many scored in that second inning. And since then, it's now 13 in a row retired. There have been two different moments when Royal relievers were standing and throwing in the bullpen. And that sent the air to right center. Melinda is sprinting back on a hop. Waters crisscross and makes the catch. Reds in order again.
June 23rd, stay for a fun postgame concert featuring Quinn 92, part of the Ohio Lottery postgame concert series presented by Duncan. And Brandon Williamson is done. He leaves in line for the win. And back in a Reds Uni, his first Reds outing since April of 2022, Daniel Duarte. Now that pitch, the slider, is what was brought up by David Bell, but we asked him before the game today what stood out in his time at AAA this year. He said the fastball showed velo, that is back, and the slider was very sharp. Long run steer. One down. No concern for Duarte, though, Cowboy at AAA. While he was more than a strikeout and inning guy, as you saw, a lot of walks and a decent number of hit batters, too. And he is entering a one run game. There's now double barrel in the Royals' pen. Two different right handers. I think if you can get through this inning, you could potentially have Jabot, Sims, and Diaz to finish this ball game the last three innings. Coming into last night, all those guys have thrown at least two days in a row. And he got Duarte facing, yeah, he just had to face Witt, who's got a two-run homer. He's right in the middle. Uppercut shot popped right side. It's a couple of pops, two down. Jackson Kowar warms alongside Taylor Clark, who the Reds saw last night. Figure Clark would be the tied or up man, and Kowar would be the trailing man, most likely. I think the last time I saw Jackson Kowar pitch, he was wearing a blue and orange Florida jersey. Bounce to third in between hop. Nice clean glove by Newman. Welcome back, Daniel Duarte. Smooth inning, all on the infield.
Friday telecast is presented by authority of the Cincinnati Reds and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Reds. Our FanDuel Live total runs update over under pregame stood at nine and a half. It has since elevated to 11 and a half. We haven't seen any run scoring since the third. Reds cling to a one run advantage. Kevin Newman and company try to pat it against the first man out of the Royals pen, Jackson Kowar. His second stint in the bigs with the Royals this year. Had a rough go Sunday against Baltimore when Gunnar Henderson took him deep. And he gave up three runs. Smooth heater right there at the bottom of the strike zone. Has a good slider and changeup. There's the change sky to right. 15 consecutive Reds retired. Lyles left on the hook. He went six, but five runs, five hits, three walks, four strikeouts, a wild pitch. All five runs crossed in the second. Fairchild had an RBI single and a run score to that inning. He has since fly to center. Hard ground ball to short. Witt's got a gun. Fairchild can fly, but he gets clipped two down. Brief word now from Miami Valley Gaming. Shimmy on down and get ready to get lucky at Miami Valley Gaming. Awesome. <laughs> I love the way you react. He's <laughs> got that cat diesel lid working. C.J. Friedel. Now it looks like Ian Jabot is now up as you had predicted in the Reds bullpen. I think you're in a, in a position right now where you've only got a one run lead. You would you would like to believe that your team is going to add to that lead as the game goes on but. You don't know that, so you gotta you gotta put your best out there. Fastball strike. You know that that's the that's the toughest part I think about managing is handling that bullpen. I mean, you're you're handling players and manipulating lineups. I, I do understand that, but trying to get pitchers in the right spots for them to be successful. That's not always the easiest of tasks. And in today's world, it's just commonplace that there's way more churn in bullpens in terms of roster right. turnover. Well, you have your top three or four guys, and then you're using basically the option pipeline between AAA and the big leagues to kind of churn out guys that you know can can pitch in a ball game that you might be either way ahead or way behind. Mm -hmm. Friedel aboard again. What a great night. Two hits, a ribby, a line drive out, and here a two out walk to snap the string at 16 consecutive Reds retired. Yeah, I'm trying to remember back a ball game where the Reds were retired in succession like we've seen here tonight. I mean, not even Kershaw did that.
McLean has walked. He's 0 for 2. Stirring in the Royals pen. And and I would <laughs> with the Reds that, that's that's how you beat them. If you can keep them off base, then you kind of cut down the threat level. Because it's not like the Reds are going to hit a whole bunch of home runs, but you let somebody get on base, it's almost like a shark smelling blood. I mean, they, they come after it. And there is a lot of water here, so it's a good environment. There is a lot of water. I love those waterfalls, by the way. They look awesome. One one swing and miss. The waterfalls cascade down. The fountains will shoot up and spray at times. It's a very unique and serene scene. Well, the Royals have a lefty up. It's the right handed India on deck, then the switch hitting De La Cruz. It's Austin Cox again, who had warmed early in the game. Snap throw, Friedel plunges back in. I adore the stirrup look from Friedel. Throwback. You know a guy plays the game the right way when his uniform's always dirty and he plays in the outfield. <laughs> There's no dirt out there. It's a cool shot. 2-2 Two -two floats up. I would think you know what's coming, right? By far his best pitch has been that fastball. Is it in the zone? Is it a hittable pitch? Friedel goes on the edge, strike three. Louisville, Votto, a couple of walks tonight. Nick Senzel, whom we might see in Houston on Friday. Good night, two for three, a couple of singles. Will Myers went deep. Tony Santian has returned to the mound, working off some rust. But the Reds on the horizon are going to have some interesting roster decisions. Teams playing well. They're starting 
to become whole. Ian Jabot is in. Strike one. I mean, if indeed the Reds are able to find a consistent pattern with the Jabot, Sims, Diaz, late inning relieving core, and you mix in Buck Farmer into that along with Alex Young, I mean, that, that gives you a pretty consistent back end. And it, what that does is it allows starters to think, all right, if I can give it all I've got for five innings, then that bullpen is going to cover it. Now, can you do that every night? No way. But can you do it while you have the lead? Of course you can. Benson lights again. Not the cleanest read, but he makes the play. Well, Benson saw it right off the bat. He got a tremendous jump. But as he's going in for the ball, you can see that ball goes right into the lights that are right over the third base dugout. Now, Royals have double barrel. It's Austin Cox and Aroldis Chapman. We'll get a pinch hitter with Derek Johnson coming out for a chat. As it looks like Massey hits for Duffy. So the left handed hitter stands in for the right handed bat. And I would suggest this is nothing more than a bit of a refresher on the scouting report of the guy that's that's coming to the plate. You got a one run lead. When you're the pitching coach and the manager, you're not thinking about just the guy that's coming to the plate in this inning. You're looking four, five, maybe six hitters down the road as to how you want your bullpen matchup. By the way, part of that puzzle, Jimmy told us about Santion. First week of July is where the Reds are currently thinking Santion could be back, that he will need a handful of outings. Up and in. And a bark by Massey. Now Massey doubled twice yesterday, pulled both doubles to right. Benson plays him about as deep as he's played that in right. It's a real interesting conversation right there with Ben May and Tyler Stevenson because that ball was right at the helmet of Massey. I mean, I, I think the. The kid at the plate could have a little bit of pause if it was actually a fastball. It was a cutter, and it looked like Jabot just held on to it a bit too long. Elevates that cutter to make it 3 0. Oh. Massey is actually not hit righties all that well, just 207. Doesn't need to swing. Four pitch walk. That is the first walk issued by Reds pitching tonight. Now you almost get the feeling that the message for Jabot there was to elevate the hard stuff because he had pitched down to Oliveras and all of the pitches there to Massey were high in the strike zone. Switch hitting Waters, throw to first, Massey back in. The Let's Go Royals chant emerges. Just low. Well, Mass Waters has shown a propensity to run a bit, 
but he has not shown that he can hit big league pitching. And this is a guy you just got to go right at him. Healthy cut. He's also had a fairly limited number of at bats. He missed the first 51 games with a strained oblique. He's only been with the club for a couple of weeks. Runner goes, good jump. Pitch fisted foul to the screen. The Royals don't run as much or as well as the Reds, but they are just outside the top five in the American League. It is part of how they try to manufacture runs. They have had a hard time scoring on the year and heightened of late. Fairchild stretches, loosening some at left. De La Cruz nearly square up the middle. Best arm on the infield. Probably the best arm among Reds position players. Tallest. That runs in, that got him. It grazes Waters two on one out. Do the Reds want a challenge? Well, that is not exactly what you want to do if you're the Reds right now. Because you've given free passes now to the seven and eight hole batters. Whispers on the jersey. So now Blanco, who has great speed, corners pinch. Now that Jabot has gotten himself in trouble, you have to get Sims up early. You'd like to have that three-headed monster at the end of the game with Jabot or Farmer and then Sims and Diaz, but if one gets in trouble, somebody's got to back him up. Pickoff play, wide throw. Yeah, the Reds got wit on a pickoff in the opening inning. By the way, some housekeeping. The De La Cruz claim of third in the second correctly changed from E2 on the throw to E4 on the drop by Duffy. Oh, two. Up and in. Hit him. A shake of the head, though, by Ben May at home plate. Athletic trainer pops out. And there's no sign of him going down to first. Didn't, oh. didn't hit him. Hit in and out of the mitt of Tyler Stevenson. So a couple of pitches up near the heads of Royals. Tensions heightened in this one run game two on one out. Now CB Buckner from third correcting the count. 
because that was up and in. Scoreboard had 2 1, 1 2 in the dirt, smothered by Stevenson. Two to a full count. Top of the order on deck. Sims by now is ready. Could not snap off that breaking ball. Bases loaded on a walk. Walk, hit, batter, walk. And here comes a reluctant David Bell. Javot just does not have it tonight. He makes the move, the skyline chilly, call to the bullpen. One run game, Lucas Sims inherits a pickle. Scott's MLB All-Star ballot is open. You can vote daily, MLB.com slash vote. Decide who will represent the Reds at the Midsummer Classic. One run game, bases loaded, one out, and hand me down men have been a common occurrence for the Reds. This bullpen has endured the most inherited runners in baseball on the year. Now only 29% score, that's middle of the pack. Here's a high pressure spot, top of the order for Lucas Sims. Well, it's pressure in both spots. You only have a one run lead, but you've got to be able to execute pitches on the plate because you have no place to put Nick Prado. Sims has inherited 13 men, four have scored. Slider down. The Royals second worst in the American League hitting with men in scoring position. They are two for 17 on the series. Fastball strike. Well, because they're only one out, you don't have to have the benefit of a hit. You can just get the ball in the air, and that's, that's the other part that Sims has to battle here as well. Benson just loosened his throwing arm at right. And he misses with a slider. 
Now he has two different breaking balls, two different speeds. We haven't seen as much of the slower curveball, I feel like, in recent outings. Swing and miss with that hard slider up. Got, Got him looking. Fastball in. A sweet strikeout from Sims. Well, these are the times where strikeouts matter most. A Royals crowd that booed early as the Reds ravaged starter Jordan Lyles in the second. As loud as it's been is their captain, Salvador Perez, swings and misses. Now if I see that swing there, I'm going to stay in, stay hard, maybe climb the ladder a bit. A one, swing and miss, devastating slider away. Or you could throw that anytime. Now you can go to two different spots if you're Lucas Sims. You just don't want to make a mistake in the center of the plate. 0-2. Oh, Perez played hero last night when the Royals were down to their last out. He thundered his team leading 14 homer to tie the game and force extras in the home ninth. time I think if you go heater up here you've got a strikeout this came on a changeup Sims delivers in the dirt Stevenson smothers and, and the reason I suggested fastball up in that situation is because of the way that Perez took the previous breaking ball when you take it and you don't move your hands at all then you saw it out of the hand Two two down and away check swing no go full count Perez is swing happy. He chases a lot. Most fans stand. Sims comes set. Payoff. Barbecue sauce. He struck him out.
Cincinnati Reds baseball on Bally Sports Ohio is brought to you by Jake Sweeney Chevrolet serving the tri-state for over 100 years. Nighttime in Kansas City Reds up 5 4 Massey had stood in to hit for Duffy he succeeds him at second and a pitching change to the lefty who's warmed several times Austin Cox is in. Yeah, I find it interesting that Jonathan India is kind of a reverse splits guy at the plate. He hits right handers better than he does left handers. But he's also in a most familiar spot, and that's leading off an inning. That is when India is at his best. Smashes that ball early down the left field side. Foul. Why does he have those reverse splits? Is that just a weird I, coincidence? I think because his, his weakness is to pitch away, and that's where most lefties throw the ball. Payoff. Tried to check, appeal, no go, and a lead off wall. Telling you, you get a whole different Jonathan India in a leadoff situation because his objective at that point is just to get on base, not to try to do too much. And I think sometimes when he's in that number three spot, a lot of times he tries to do a little bit too much. Now, can he settle into that three spot? Sure he can, but he's got to hit in the three spot like he does in the leadoff spot. And to your point, leading off on base 402. He's, he's a rock star. I mean, he was on pace to lead this league in run scored. Leads the team in steals. Lefty on the hill. De La Cruz batting right handed for the first time takes a wide strike. De La Cruz among his strikeouts last night was a fastball that looked quite low from Baroldis Chapman. Well, he struck out twice today looking, and both of those were on fastballs, and that those fastballs were the only ones he saw in the at bat. Mm -hmm. Grounded to short, Witt charges in, takes a funky bounce, pivot relay, double play. Well, that leadoff runner erased, and that means Royals pitching has still faced just one over the minimum since McLean's walk in the second inning. Steer has an RBI single since a fly to left and a strikeout swinging. Upstairs strike. Oh and two. Cranked in the air to left. 
Blanco going back, and he's got it at the wall. in part to successive strikeouts from Lucas Sims. And big strikeouts they were. There was no room for error with the bases loaded. And how ironic is it that Lucas Sims gets those strikeouts on fastballs when the majority of pitches that he throws are that high spin breaking ball. There's that slider that spins away from Melendez. Excuse me, DeWitt. And Witt went deep in the third, subject of our StatCast 3D powered by Google Cloud. I did the same thing, Cowboy. I, I dropped the hitter down in my scorebook. That makes me feel better. I like seeing the scribbling in your book. <laughs> There's a lot of that. <laughs> one, one, swing and a miss. Now he's gone back to back breaking balls to wit here. Now he's a hitter that will chase that breaking ball yet again because wit is dead set on leaning on that fastball. Alexis Diaz now stands in the Reds pen. Slider away. I think right now for Diaz, this is just a soft toss in case Sims gets himself in trouble. 2 2, fouled back. Sims struck him out. Slider with depth. That is three straight strikeouts for Lucas Sims. Under control. Slider with two strikes. That's perfection. You can see that ball is maybe an inch or two off the plate. But the key to that pitch is that it starts on the plate. It requires a commitment from the hitter. 
especially after that previous fastball that was right on the outside corner corner almost in the same spot. Fastball in the touch tight. Scott Barlow loosens for the Royals. Looks like they may go double barrel. Sims misses low. We've got Barlow and Chapman throwing in the Royals pen. Bounce to first, right into the bread basket. Steer feeds Sims two down. Michael to Garcia, three outs on the ground, including a double play. Pitch. Over short. Friedel charges, scoops, wide turn, and a hold. Two out single by Garcia. You notice the aggressiveness of the with the approach from Friedel. And that in itself will slow the runner as they aggressively around first base. Whether the ball's in left center or right center, he goes after it full speed. And by doing that, the hitter looks up or the runner looks up and says, I right, no chance for me to take off for second. If you lollygag it, they will take it, the hitter and the runner will take advantage of it like the Reds have done. Garcia five for five in steel tries on the year. Runner goes, staggered start, pitch popped up. De La Cruz and Newman over. Newman gives ground. De La Cruz secures the final out. Big innings from Sims. He matches his longest outing of the year. Works around the two out single in the eighth. Reds baseball and more the Jim Day podcast 
Enjoy an extended chat with current and former players as well as others associated with the Reds. Tune in Reds.com slash podcasts. Reds up a run. The score has stood since the close of the third. Stevenson in the air, right field. Melendez going back on the track at the wall, leaps into the fence, and he robs Stevenson. Mm. You know, when I see Stevenson facing a left-hander, it makes me think of the big bad wolf facing little Red Riding Hood, and he almost hit it in the bread basket. I mean, that's a right-handed hitter hitting the ball like a left-handed pull hitter and almost got it out of here. All the better to rob you with. You've got that right. Now David Bell goes to his bench with the lefty on the mound. He yanks back Will Benson. Sends up the right-handed bat of T.J. Hopkins, hence the mound visit as they talk about attacking this Reds rookie. That was 102 off the bat for Stevenson, and you know what? I, I love that. He's looking more and more like himself. He's driving the ball with more authority. I think he's feeling confident. Gets the call. Uh, that's something that Cox has done against these right-handed hitters. He's tried to live just off the plate away. What will the margin be? Diaz occasionally tosses in the pin. Bottom third will be due up for the Royals in the home half. Slugged in the air to right. Melendez has it red. Long fly ball out. Stay with us after the game. Reds live the post game program from your local Toyota dealers. There's some magic between BG and Sammy. They'll break down David Bell's bunch in the five run second. The start from Williamson. Big bridge innings from Sims. Kevin Newman, a two run double, a run scored. Daniel Dart Duarte looked awfully good as well. A three up, three down, sixth inning. Bridge that to the back end of the bullpen. Chopped to short, hard charge wit, low skip, sidearm flick. He is strong. Reds in order. Will one be enough? The Reds hot closer. Alexis Diaz enters.
Tomorrow the series concludes and we invite you to join us in Reds Live the pregame show 730 here at Valley Sports Ohio Ben Lively gets the ball against Daniel Lynch. Well, Hopkins had hit for Benson. He also replaces him in right field. So the Reds retain speed in the outfield and enter the closer. The dominant endgame man, Alexis Diaz. A fantastic start to his year. He opposes bottom third. It starts with Michael Massey. Dotted fastball strike. He walked as a pinch hitter in the seventh. Popped up. India barely budges one away. That pitch looked like it was going to hit Massey in the back quad. And he swung at it. That tells you how late that break is. Watch where this ball ends up at contact. I mean, that's heading for his knee on the back side. The switch hitting waters. Yanks back a bunt, takes a strike, slider lower third. Diaz threw back-to-back -back days in St. Louis. As the Reds got their first series win there in a couple of years. You know, I talk about this a lot with Diaz. Because of his long stride and the way that he releases the ball with that whip with his arm, he is so close to the hitter as close as anybody else in Major League Baseball. I think that gives him that that up play on his fastball and his breaking ball. That's why you get so many ugly swings. It's not because it's over the top movement or over the top velocity. It's just that the reaction time is cut down by how close he is when he lets the ball out of his hand. Three one in the air to center. Friedel slows near the track. He's got it. Two down. By the way, Joel Luckup points out on Twitter that Tyler Stevenson shot to right last inning would have been a home run in 28 of the other 29 ballparks. This Reds team is getting hot even on days when they go through cold stretches they find ways only Cleveland has played more one run games than the Reds Blanco is singled walked lined out well make no mistake we get to see all of the energizing effects of this one through nine lineup but this bullpen has been spectacular over this run. I mean, they have just basically been a shutdown bullpen in spots that you would not expect it. And I think probably the we showed the inherited runners and, and how many have scored. I, I think that that's one of the things that you're starting to see kind of form in that bullpen. I'll pick you up. You like Jabot had a tough day today. Sims picks him up. And you could very well go a week from now and it might be flip flop. Sims might have a tough day, but yet it's Jabot that comes in out of the bullpen for the pickup. All you're trying to do is get the ball to the man that's on the mound right now, Alexis Diaz. 
struck him out. A 16th save for Diaz. The Reds secure the series, and they record their league-high tying 22nd comeback win of the year. Win the games that you're supposed to win, and when you've got a lockdown closer, boy, it sure does make things shorter at the back end of the ball game. Remember how at the start of the year, the Reds toiled on the road. They struggled significantly in one-run games. They have come on at both categories. They are 15 and 8 in their last 23 on the road. They now have a winning record in one-run ball games. There is no quit in this bunch. And the camaraderie that, that they share, all these young kids coming together. Tell you what. Look out, National League Central. I like it. Post game still to come. A sea of smiles. The Reds have won four in a row. BG and Sammy on the other side.